just pray for you. But before I pray for you, I saw something for you guys during praise and worship. And, and it was specifically for you guys because I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do you have for them tonight? You know, and what I, was, what I saw was there was a paved street, okay? And on this paved street, I, a, there was a Bible the size of a bus, okay? There was a Bible the size of a bus and it was like, had gold dust all around it, okay? It's emanating the glory of God. And the, this Bible opened up and the heart came out of it, okay? Wow. And I was asking the Lord, what is that? And he's like, this is what I want to give them. A heart for me, because this is what you're going to take to the streets, okay? It is not the Word of God. It is not just uh, the idea of Him. It is the heart, which first is birthed inside of you, for you to give out, okay? But, uh, Lord, I just bless, uh, Lord, this gathering in this group here, Lord God, as they come, Lord, out of passion for you. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would, would fill them, Lord God satisfy them of their hunger and their thirst for you, Lord God. God, leave, do not let anyone leave here, Lord God, tonight, Lord God, without a touch from you, without an experience from you, Lord God, without, Lord, you revealing yourself, Lord God, to their mind and into their soul, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord. We give this time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so, what's on my heart today is, is uh, I know that before a while back, we talked about the agreement with grace, okay? As Jesus died on the cross, he, he poured out his grace, which empowers us to live a holy and righteous lifestyle. But I've noticed that over time, we've kind of had a, um, we teach about agreeing with grace, but we take it lightly because we really don't understand the full measure of what God's grace is, partly because we don't fully understand the grace giver. Who's the grace giver? Jesus, right? I don't know why I raised my hand for that. <laughs> so, but in order to understand God's grace, we have to understand the person who is Jesus. But to understand God and why he pours out his grace, we have to understand his, his character. But what you find in his character is a spectrum or a duality of his nature and it is not we're so used to seeing okay well god's nature is okay well he's he's or or anything we're so used to seeing light and dark uh good and bad but the thing is i know that many times we read the bible and a lot of us especially when i was a new believer coming into the knowledge of christ i couldn't understand why god's wrath was so um so heavy and so uh, not nice, okay? And so we, we place it in the spectrum. It's like, well, God is God of the New Testament, full of love, and God of the Old Testament, I don't know why you're so not nice, okay? So, but, so we're going to shine some light on God's judgment and His mercy, and why, or God's judgment and His mercy, so that we can get a full, broad spectrum of why God empowers us with grace, okay? See, because in order to, when we repent and we overcome our sins, or we are asking God for the grace to overcome our sins, that agreement with grace, agreeing with God that, God, you have the power in, to give me, to empower me to walk a holy and righteous lifestyle. Why? So that we can get deeper to, in, into the character and the nature and the love of God. But we, in our agreement, we have to go beyond our perception of it. Okay? And so that's what we're doing tonight. As we dig into the Word, we're going to just study. Okay? We're going to study about uh, the nature and the heart of God. So coming, you know, as you're here, um, if it doesn't make sense, I'm hoping that what I'm, what I'm going to share with you guys tonight makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but it may not come out that way. Okay? So, sorry. So we're going to start in Ephesians uh, 5.11. So in Ephesians 5.11, I'll read it to you. Uh, I know some of you are taking notes. I'm happy to do both. In Ephesians 5.11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. All things are exposed, are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. So here we already see about 
the a, a nature of God, what he's telling us to do is to expose sin, expose darkness, okay? And even expose the things that are in our lives that are not in agreement with God's will. But we'll see many times in the Old Testament that God is very big on exposing. And he talks about nakedness. In our nakedness, it is our shame, it is our guilt, it is our... Uh, our, our self that is unpleasing to God when we are naked. And that's why God many times has to clothe us, okay? And especially clothe us in his righteousness. Another, another uh, verse is in 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Okay. So this exposure of sins, okay, many times in our lives you're going to come, if you do not start agreeing with God's grace and His mercy, there will come a time where He will bring judgment. Okay? Now in His judgment, He will expose the things that is not so good in our lives. Okay? And a lot of times that judgment comes at a very steep price. It also comes with a heavy weight of it too. And how many of us know that now that we're reborn in Christ, before that, did we not make a lot of mistakes where God had to redeem us from? Make a lot of mistakes that hurt not only us, but the people around us. But see, God has to expose this, okay? God has to bring it out because if you do not agree with his grace and his mercy, he's got to bring it out, out into the open so that he can judge you. But it is not... Again, it is not because, you know, on one end God is love and the other end God is bad or evil or doesn't care about us. No, his exposure of, of sins out of his judgment is because he loves us. Because, and you have to see it, and we'll, we'll, we'll see it some more in the Old Testament. In, the nation of Israel is always in disobedience to God. There are moments where they will agree with his grace and there's prosperity. And then they're within the will of God and obtaining from him the blessings and the promises uh, that were um, for them. But then when they disobeyed, they, couldn't, they continued in their ways, but they couldn't see past that. Okay? They couldn't see what they were doing. They couldn't see the idolatry and the, the perversion, everything that they have um, allowed in. So God has to expose this, and he exposes it so that we would repent. He exposes it so that we can have our minds and our eyes open. And he exposes this naked, nakedness, our filthy selves, so that we can look at ourselves and be like, man, I am uncovered. God, that I'm without, I'm, I'm not under your protection. There are many times, uh, so in Nahum, when he talks about the, the nation of, uh, in Assyria, Jonah, and who was it? Nineveh. Nahum. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Who came first? Jonah came first. And then Nahum, right? Jonah came first, and he declared judgment on Nineveh because they were, they were an Assyrian nation, though they had God's people living in it. But they were so full of sin, they allowed prostitution. They allowed people who, like um, divination, people, palm readers, and all these people to come in and perverse a whole entire nation. But when Jonah declared the word of God, which came in judgment for them, they repented. And when they repented, God spared them. Not only that, God blessed them. But then only 150 years after that did, did things go bad again. And in fact, it continued to get worse after that. And they forgot what God did for them. And so Nahum comes up as a prophet and he says, Behold, and he says, uh, as God is speaking through him. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. And then, proceeding after that, a lot of bad stuff. Okay? But he, he does it because he loves his people. He does it because he has to expose us because we would not have snapped in our right mind without it. We would not have had seen clearly without his judgment because in... in what they did, and what I believe what they did, is that they forgot who he was. Because if he knew, if they knew who God was, they would walk uprightly. 
Okay? If they knew who God was, they would be in his will. They would do the best that they could in their, uh, in their uh, righteousness. In Hosea 2.2, 2, another story. God is always using his nation, Israel, or his people as females. And, and as female, not just as females, but as his bride, as his lover, or as his dear child. Okay? And so in Hosea 2, 2, let her put away her harlotries from her sight and let her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and expose her as in the day she was born and slay her with thirst. I skipped a couple lines between that. But we'll slay her with thirst. God does these things, and though it seems harsh and it seems um, very heavy on them, they didn't want to repent. They didn't want to turn to the Lord because grace can only be given when we repent, when we change our direction, change our minds, and go towards God. Will is repentance given, or I mean, is grace given? What is grace? Grace is getting for us something that we don't deserve. And what is it that we don't deserve? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. God's empower the good things that God gives us. The empowerment and the enabling for us to walk righteously. Okay? What is mercy? Something that is withheld even though we deserve it. I'm sorry? Something withheld even though we deserve it. Yes. Yes, mercy is, is God not giving us what we deserve, which is his judgment, which is his wrath. Okay? In Ezekiel, same thing. He will say, like, I will uncover your nakedness. This kind of language where it's like, I'm going to expose you. Okay? Because you covered yourself up with all these things and you think it's good for you. You can't see past it. I'm going to take it away. I'm going to strip it away so that you can see. And I'm going to do it because I love you. It is not because he's out to get you or anything. He cares about you so much that he wants this heart connection for them to turn around and their heart to be, to have so much conviction on. Have you guys ever had that kind of conviction where you know that you did something wrong and it's the Holy Spirit inside you, but, but your heart just tears? It's, it's not just like, oh, Lord, forgive me, I repent and something, but it's true conviction where it causes you to get on your knees and just cry out. That kind of conviction only comes, um, well, we know that comes through the Holy Spirit, but we have to repent in order to receive God's grace and to allow the full redemptive work of Christ to work through us. Grace is the impartation of God's power that enables us to obey. And it is the grace when we repent, we just simply change our mind about the direction that we're going, about the sin that we're living in. God changes that. God empowers you with grace, okay? And gives you this grace. But coming back to, to my point earlier, it's like a lot of times we pray, but God, give me grace. Lord, give me grace to love somebody. But in Revelations 19, it speaks of God as a bridegroom, king, and judge. He, in the beginning of eternity, which is the last book of Revelations, Revelations is not the end, it's actually the beginning, okay? Revelations is the beginning of eternity, and as he goes into, as he starts off going into eternity, he declares who we are to him, is that he considers us his lover, his bride, that he's going to come and he's going to to marry. There's a wedding feast. And Revelations 19 talks about a wedding that he, uh, that in which we prepare ourselves, posture our hearts in a way that allows God to come and rapture us or to come to take us, come to, to wed us. Okay? In a sense. You just think about it. Okay. <laughs> but following that chapter in Revelations 19, is the war. See, if you read Revelations 19 again, I, I want you to go back and, and read it, even follow up on Mike Bickle's teaching on Revelations 19. 
okay? Because why does he go to war? Because he goes to war for love. He goes to war to separate everything. The beginning of eternity is to separate everything that hinders us from the heart of God. And right now, as the life that we're living, grace is enabling us to live out a measure of that. Okay? Enabling us to, a measure, uh, to experience a measure of his love, a measure of his, his power and his affections for us. But it's going to be so much more when all, everything that hinders love is removed and taken away by a great war in, at the beginning of eternity. So a lot of times we ask, you know, Lord, give me grace to love but somebody. Lord, give me grace to do this. Let me give me grace to do that. We have a false view of grace because of our perception. Because in essence, we don't really know the heart of God. To know the heart of God, uh, well, I'm sorry, we, I know that you all know the heart of God. Okay? I'm just saying uh, in an increase. Okay? In an increase into knowing the heart of God, you'll know that His, the grace that He empowers you is powerful. The grace that He enables you is, is war. Okay? What He's imparting into your spirit is every power that you need in order to war against everything that hinders his love in this age. And so we come into, again, the, par or the thinking. It's like, okay, well, God, you're on one end and on the other end. But God says in Ezekiel 33, Yet the children of your people say the way of the Lord is not fair. Okay, so some people are saying like, well, God, I know that you said in your word this and that, but it's kind of harsh. It's not quite fair. Well, God says, well, when the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, commits sin. Okay, so if you were perfect or trying to be perfect and you sin, he shall die because of it or there's judgment because of it. Okay, whereas if you were Wicked, but when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. And he says it several times in the book of Ezekiel. Are you guys following along? It makes sense to my mind. But the tenacity, you have to understand the tenacity of God, of the extreme measures that he would go to for you. Okay, the impartation of his spirit and the enabling of his grace being imparted to you is, is out of love. It is for the full burning passion cons consummation of how he feels about you. But we think that grace, we take it so lightly because we're like, okay, empower me with grace, but we don't feel anything. But if we can understand the heart of God and understand how, how powerful his grace is, it can change your life. It can enable you to walk out everything in this age that comes against you and God, whether it is relationships, broken hearts, uh, faithlessness, maybe a healing that you've been believing in, maybe a salvation for your family that you've been believing in. The tenacity of God. <laughs> if you can get that in your spirit to know how much he wars for you, how much he thinks about you, day and night, that he is unceasing, and that his thoughts about you are always good. For in the Bible it says, he desires mercy and not sacrifice. He desires mercy to give you, so that you can turn around, so that you can get things right, so that you can live a life connected to his heart, because that's what he wants. But he knows you can't do it on yourself. Micah 7. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. The heart of God. Mercy. Do you know what happens when conviction hits your spirit? True conviction? It's heavy. It, it wrecks you. When conviction hits you, it's just like, God, I, it, it, 
makes you, like in the Bible, it talks about like rending their garments. They would, in an act and in, in a sign of showing that, Lord, that they are so sorry for what they did, they would rip their clothes open, which I won't do. <laughs> Please, no. no. They would rip their clothes we have off. Okay. Underage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The same conviction that happens inside of us that is tearing us apart is to bring about the outworking of love. Why does he bring this conviction? Why does he want you to repent? Why? Because it's hindering his love and he wants to show you that. So in essence, the conviction comes because he's exposing what's dark, the darkness that's inside. He's exposing and bringing it out so we can deal with it. He's bringing it out so that you can deal with it so you can repent and then for him to enable Grace. Let me tell you what his grace is like. In the New Testament, when Jesus was in the temple, and he saw all these people who was inside the temple of God, and they were selling things, and they were just pretty much prostituting, okay? Not prostituting in the sense, but like selling away goods, and, and in a sense, also saying, you know, hey, I'll give you this, and then I'll give you a quicker way to talk to a priest or something. You know, they were selling these things. They were buy, giving rights and selling these uh, and, and merchandise and selling doves and cattle. Why were they selling cattle inside the temple? It's because they're going to sell this to people so that they can offer it up as a sacrifice. So it doesn't really come from them or the person who's wanting to give a sacrifice to God. But here's where conviction comes. Here's what the Holy Spirit is like. Okay, what did Jesus do in the temple? Yes. And if my stuff wasn't on here, I'd throw this over. Just to display. But he made a whip, okay? He started whipping everybody out of the temple. He cleaned house, okay? He went inside and he cleaned house. And in the Bible it says, uh, Matthew records uh, that, what does the verse go? Zeal for his house has consumed him. Okay? Or consumed him. Zeal or his love for you, his passion for you, consumed him so much, cons his passion for God consumed him so much that he, tar he started tossing everything around and kicked everybody out because he wanted a clean house, because he wanted a house that was clean for God. Who makes up the temple today? We do. Do you think God feels any different now? He feels the same way for his house, feels the same way for you, that he would fight for you, that he would war for you, that he would expose everything of darkness to get it out of your life so that you could feel the full measure of his love, feel the full measure of what he has for you. Have you ever thought about sometimes I, the Holy Spirit came because I promised from God. The Holy Spirit did not loathe us, okay? Or say, oh man, I'm paired up with this one. I'd rather go with this one because, you know, they walk a straighter line. No, Holy Spirit feels the same way about each and every one. It's given to us, though he has the mind, will, and emotions of God, affections for God. And though the Bible also talks about being grieved, in the, or we can grieve the Holy Spirit. But his attitude about you doesn't change. He doesn't depart from you. The Holy Spirit in you empowers you by, or leads you and guides you in direction and brings conviction so that you can obtain grace to walk out this life, okay? But then sometimes we look in the mirror. I know I had seasons of this way back when, when I really didn't fully understand how God feels about me. And I would wake up and be like, God, are you pleased with me? Who has asked that question before? Right? You look in the mirror like, God, are you, are you pleased? with the person that I am. But have you thought about that? Why the Holy Spirit brings his conviction is because he sees something in you that you don't. That he sees something good in you that you don't, you can't even see right now in the physical, in your circumstances. That it is God who seeks, who has the mind and the, who seeks the mind and, and searches the mind and the, the heart of people. It is the same God who searches us. So in order to obtain grace, in order to understand His grace, which is a 
like all-consuming and it's like declaring war inside of us against everything that hinders love I mean what <laughs> it's got to move you the next time that you know we need our minds to be open to them. we need to open our minds to allow God to expand our hearts and in essence allows God to move inside of our lives into our hearts Okay, to bring about that change. To bring about the perfect work of Jesus in us. When it comes to grace, we need the right view of God. Placed in the perspective that He loves you and He enjoys you. And He only exposes sins if you are unwilling to repent. Only to bring about a greater outworking of love. Okay? It is not that God is good on one sense and evil on the other. No. He is good all the time. And even in his judgment, though it seems bad, is for love and out of love. Okay? A lot of time we have, because we don't understand if God enjoys us, we have a lot of fear and a lot of trust issues, and a lot of unbelief. But fear and unbelief is opposite of faith, right? So we have fear and unbelief, and then faith and obedience. But where the areas in where we fear, the areas in where we have unbelief, is it not sin, right? But where sin does abound, grace does what? much more abound. Much more abound in your unbelief is God's grace, okay, to empower you to have faith. And what does the Bible say about faith? 1 John 4, no, 1 John 5. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes in the Son of God. First John 4, a little bit uh, backtracking. And he says, and you, you all have heard this many times, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he, is, he who is in the world. That is the grace that he has given us to overcome everything that's in this world. If we allow him in, if we choose this, because how many of us know that what God's how many of you know that the things that we envision uh, for ourselves in the things of God pales in comparison to God's vision for us right we can't get past this perception that we have in, in our own thought and our own intellect to move on past and understand how God feels about us, and to understand how much God is willing to touch your heart and just how much He desires you. That comes by grace. That comes by you simply turning your mind towards Him to direct, to direct God into your heart so that God can expand your capacity in your heart to love, expand your capacity to receive Him, to attain His grace. Am I making sense? You guys understand? Mm -hmm. Next time you go through trials, and yes, and, and you fail, and you get up, and you ask God for grace, well, God already knows that the posture of your heart, whether you say, I repent or not, declaring it out loud, it is inside your heart that you said that, Lord, I repent. You know, I'm going to turn the other way. Or it grieves me so much in here. God, do something. When you allow that, when you allow God to come into your heart, there's a greater outpouring of grace. Grace has already been given to you. Empowering grace. Okay, and we always say we need more of that, but it's like how much more power do we need if you would understand how much he has already given you? Next time in your trials, think of God as coming to war in your stead. Okay? Coming to war in your situation. And who knows God is victorious all the time.
Agree with grace. Cooperate with grace. Open your heart to receive it. But knowing that God is warring on your behalf. God can enable you to change directions, to turn around. And sometimes we feel like we failed so much where we're outside of his mercy or outside of, of his, his mercy and his grace and we're so far from him. But no, inside of you, grace is given to empower you to, to make your direction back towards him. If you receive it, But it takes first your mind to change. To understand how much he has already given you. To understand what his grace is like. So. Oh, thank you, Andy. How are you guys feeling?